independent in thought and punk rock in life. It's the Chad Benson Show. I think the president is wounded as he comes into the state of the address. He's still reeling from the midterm elections that didn't go well for his party, that didn't go well for his political brand. He's coming off a government shutdown that he started uh, that didn't leave the other side unscathed, but still hurt him and which he ended up caving to end. And now there's a specter of another one. So I think when he's wounded, when he's cornered, he tends to be small and not big. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I keep asking myself, do we really need this tonight? But we're getting it. Over under is what, like 80 minutes or something? An hour 20? And then the question is, because they're, they're already going back and forth, old Chuck Schumer and him fighting over this, and people say, well, you know, it's the first speech he's got to give in front of a Dem-controlled house, so be prepared. Well, for what? What do you think's going to happen? Do you think somebody's going to stand up and throw fruit at him? Right? Rotten vegetables and fruit? And then people are going to throw roses at him if he does well? No, that'd be more interesting, right? That would be, but that's not going to happen. Do I think it could at times? Maybe you'll hear a boo or a hiss or something. It's possible. Well, that's just it. I was telling the, some of the people in the front when I was walking by before I got into the studio, I said, you know, it'd be great if halfway through the speech, ninjas just kind of just slowly but surely descended from the roof. And I'd be like, all right, I'm watching this. But he's going to come out and do what he does, right? And he's not going to turn into a rally. I don't think he's going to go off script. The most painful thing to be to watch tonight is the fact that he's not good on a teleprompter. He'll pat himself on the back. Then Stacey Abrams, whether you like her or not, you should know some things about her. She's going to give the speech. She lost the governor's race in a very contentious and bizarre situation in Georgia. And she's got a great story. And she'll give the uh, she'll give the, the rebuttal. And then everybody will argue over it. And we'll wait till when he announces uh, when he's going to do a state of emergency. Maybe it's before. Maybe it's during. Maybe it's after. But the reality is, is, is we're not going to learn too much tonight. Because a lot of the things that I talk to people about, like we're not talking about healthcare tonight in a serious way we're not we're not touting the jobs the way it should be because it's going to be about the damn wall he will have a hard line stance on immigration i think there is a more moderate road to talk about broad immigration reform i think he wants that i think he very much wants a victory on the wall however that can be defined and i think he's still pushing toward that and is determined to get to that place whether it requires a national emergency or not yeah, I, I don't know about that, because the Democrats are dead sent against giving him anything. But there are places here that they can all agree that they've done some bipartisan work. And a lot of that stuff doesn't get talked about because it's not exciting. There's no fighting. We like conflict, right? We, we, we rubberneck politics. We're going to turn and look at two people arguing more than we all, two people having just a discussion. So we're going to rubberneck. But there are areas where they can celebrate a little bit. There are areas where they can pat themselves on the back, which is sometimes a lot of what it is. And then there'll be the areas for the big disagreement, which makes for more entertaining television. And politics has become entertainment as much as it has become actual politics anymore. Amidst all of the, the coverage and the chaos of what happens inside the White House, the reality is that not only was there passing prison reform bill, there was also bipartisan right to trial legislation. There's been bipartisan uh, success on opioid legislation. And so I think the president can say, we can do this, and there are things we can work together on. And I think he's going to lay out specifically infrastructure, um, drug pricing legislation, things of that nature. But I don't think there's any doubt as well that we should expect that he'll talk about the concerns he has at the southern border and the need to secure our border there. Yeah, and that's that's a lot of what it's going to be about. And the fight will be on, and he'll come out. Stacey Abrams will say a, a bunch of stuff, and and you know, and you know, the whole thing tonight is supposed to be about unity. But we've talked about the fact that you can't have unity if neither side wants there to be unity, because it's not in their business best interest to be together. Right. In the big situations, we have war. Something happens. That's one thing. We all come together. We sing Kumbaya. But they need a foe. So they don't want unity. They don't. It just it doesn't do them any good to be united. They can be united on certain things, you know, prison reform, drugs and stuff like that, because. 
But as far as a lot of this big stuff, there's no reason for them to be, quote unquote, uh, uh, united because there's better money in divided. The blatant hypocrisy of this president calling for unity is that he is one of the chief reasons Americans feel so divided. Yeah, he is. Really? Him? No, we're, we're going to be divided. I have news for you. When Trump was running for president, we were divided. Why? Because Obama was president. And he divided the nation. Did he really divide the nation? Or just the fact that he had a D by his name divide a lot of people? And you listen to talk radio or you listen to, to Fox or you listen to MSNBC and you were told you need to divide it and, and, and this is what was going to happen. That's what they do. They, they're prosperous over the fact that they can split. That's that. That's very real. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. And then of course the guest list. The guest list includes a snapshot of the key political messages the president will highlight. It includes a family whose loved one was killed by an undocumented immigrant, survivors of the Tree of Life synagogue, and a benefactor of Trump's tax bill. Democrats have chosen former Georgia gubernatorial candidate Stacey Abrams to deliver the rebuttal. Abrams will be the first African American woman to do so. Good. And again, she's going to be very interesting to see the way that she does this because she did lose, but it was contentious. A lot of people saying she needs to run for the Senate. They're, they're, they're wondering why wasn't she as big as Beto and Beto lost and Beto's going to be on with Oprah today. And is he going to announce his run today? He's going to be on with her podcast. I, I don't know, but it, it's about who you're bringing. You know, Ocasio Cortez is bringing the woman who, who, uh, you know, essentially yelled at Jeff Flake to the point where during the Kavanaugh hearings where he went back in and he says, Oh, maybe we should give it another week or two. And, you know, it's it's who are you bringing, right? What are you who are you bringing? What are you wearing? What's that symbol? Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. With all of this going on, you still have the issue of Governor Northam who's not given up just yet, and his lieutenant governor, who a lot of people like, who also has some scandal. So you've got the blackface scandal and then the lieutenant governor and his scandal and then who's leaking said scandal for the lieutenant governor it's crazy here you have a governor who you know after a contentious race is elected and then to have these yearbook photos who even knew medical schools had yearbooks have him come out essentially apologize and then take the apology back we were talking about how look just step out of the way let justin fairfax step into this the lieutenant governor a popular young dynamic rising star in the democratic party and then over the weekend here you have these new potential allegations against him you can't imagine what it must be like to be a voter in virginia much less a black voter who might be personally offended and this is just, I mean, it really is remarkable. Yeah, it is. And he doesn't seem to be going anywhere. And then the question of is, okay, so you were in line for this, right? Fair you, here you are, you're lieutenant governor, you're in line for this. And then this thing pops out, which had been investigated before by the Washington Post. And he came out and tweeted out, seeing yeah, this 15 years ago, this sexual assault supposedly happened. I was single. It was consensual. Uh, Washington Post found nothing and said that these are all lies. The Post came out and said, well, we didn't really get to the bottom of it. And we can't say that they were all lies. We just we we decided not to go with it. But. Who's spreading those rumors over the lieutenant governor? Because a lot of people say it's the governor himself who's trying to say, hey, you think I'm bad. Look at the guy behind me. He, he's potentially even worse. Uh, you believe that the governor's team is spreading misinformation about your team. Can you comment on that concern? And so, you believe it? You, I, you know, I, I don't know uh, precisely where this is coming from. I know, you know, we've heard uh, different things, but but here's the thing. Uh, does anybody think it's any coincidence that on the eve uh, of potentially uh, my being elevated, that that's when this uncorroborated smear comes out? Does anybody believe that's a coincidence? Uh, I don't I don't think anybody believes that's a coincidence. Remember, it's not like president. Like Lieutenant Governor has to run for it's not like president where you pick a vice president and you guys run in the same. T- it's not like that. So they're not always pals. Right. And we've seen it in other places, places like California, where Gavin Newsom, the now governor, was not a huge fan, didn't always get along with like Jerry Brown and didn't like some of the stuff. But sometimes you're told, just keep your mouth shut if you want to get to this position. And so here's this issue cropping up and he's still not going anywhere. And I continue to say this. Right. 
where he got himself into trouble is he he should have done his mea culpa, said I screwed up a long time ago, blah, 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 blah. It was horrible uh, looking back on it. Uh, you know, uh, it, it, it's an embarrassing thing. And for that, I apologize. But if you look at my actions, my actions say whatever anybody's calling me out there and virtual signaling, that's not who I am. And he actually has people, African-Americans, saying, hey, I know this cat. He's a good dude. What the governor did was took ownership of a picture that had his name as a prominent heading. But looking at that for the first time, I can't imagine how gobsmacked he must have been, just as I was disgusted. Um, thinking it was photoshopped is what I thought. And, and who knows what he thought seeing it the first time. Who knows what went through his mind. I don't. You don't think but he saw that the picture person, before? The person I know, the pers- if Ralph says he didn't see it before, he didn't see it before. That's a friend of him who is black, who's been a friend since they were children. The good that I know my friend is capable of doing, the good that he's done for the Commonwealth to date is going to win itself out if he's allowed to to continue as governor. That's if. And the biggest if may be, can he actually get anything done? Or is him being there such a distraction, or are they going to ignore him and not do anything to work with him based on this? Because their fear is they're going to get in trouble if they do work with him. Meaning there's no way he can govern, there's no way he can let, he can get any legislation, there's no way he can do anything. Is that possible? I don't know. But I did say yesterday, continue, this can potentially, for a lot of people going forward, could be a, a case study in, can you survive something like this? Is there a moratorium on stupid crap people did a long time ago or said that is now offensive that at the time, while in poor taste, wasn't what it has become today in this social justice world that we live in? 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Hope you are doing well. So the Super Bowl passed, and I was reading a bunch of bets that people won and lost. Guy placed a ton of money. Better X is his name. On the Rams, and he lost about three point eight million dollars on the Rams. Uh, people are like, oh my God, that's insane! But the year before, he won ten million dollars on the Eagle, the same person. So that kind of money, you're playing with house money at that point in time. This is your fun money, right? But another better screwed up, put two hundred and fifty dollar bet on the Rams to only score three points at four hundred to one. <laughs> I won a ton of money. 100 G's on accident. Think about that. Isn't that a nice accident? 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. we got a poll question up about the State of the Union. We'll talk about that. Oh, man, we're getting closer and closer. Tick-tock, tick-tock. Your brain is racking. You're saying to yourself, self, I know there's something coming up that I should know about when it comes to my wife, my girlfriend, my significant other. I I I I, I got to do something, and I don't know. Is it an anniversary? No. Is it a birth? No. It's uh, it's e e Easter. No. It's Valentine's Day. Oh yeah, that one eight hundred flowers dot com has you covered. It's not that complicated. Simple and easy, right? Roses from one eight hundred flowers are a no brainer. Right now, check this out: eighteen stem enchanted rose medley for twenty nine ninety nine, or double it to thirty six stems, right? For $20 more. Unbelievable price. You're not going to get this at any time. This is it. I mean, we only got like a day left of this. What are you waiting for? Jump on it. So, 18 stems for $29.99, Enchanted Rose Medley, or double those for 20 bucks more. Now is your time. Shipped overnight. Picked at the peak. Ensures freshness. You're going to be a winner, 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 winner on this. Get it done now before it's too late. Before you're that guy walking in a convenience store, going over to the aisle where you're buying the roses or the flowers next to the milk. You don't want to be that person. Do what I do. Go to my rose authority, one eight hundred flowers dot com. Order now. Eighteen stem enchanted rose medley for twenty nine ninety nine or double the roses for twenty dollars more. Go to one eight hundred flowers dot com, click on the radio icon, enter code Benson, order today, save at one eight hundred flowers dot com. Code Benson is the Chad Benson Show. Experiencing 
separation anxiety? <laughs> That's dumb. Check out Chad 24-7 at his website, chadbensonshow.com. And on iTunes, free. The Chad Benson Show. Show. Never feel lonely again. Linda Goldblum loved going to Dodgers games. Mother of three and grandmother of seven attended a game on August 25th against the Padres. She was celebrating her 79th birthday and 59th wedding anniversary. Our partners at ESPN's Outside the Line say Goldblum was sitting on the first base side of home plate. A 93-mile-per-hour foul ball hit her in the head. A newly released coroner's report says Goldblum's death was caused by blunt force trauma from the baseball. Yeah, that's the third death in Major League Baseball history that they can contribute to a foul ball. Two of them have been at Dodger Stadium. And I think it's the first one since, like, 1970. It's You go to sporting events, man, hockey games. You go to, the, you know, you think about this. These things come off the bat, off the stick, at God knows how many miles an hour. And it tells you on the ticket. And they tell you in the stands. But just because they tell you that doesn't mean every moment of every second that you are paying attention. And on top of that, sometimes people are in, you know, you hear the crack of the ball, I mean, the, the bat or something like that, and you're turning your head, you're not quite sure where it's going. It's 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 sad. It's sad that that happened. But the, everybody's like, well, what do we do? Do we put more netting in? Well, first of all, and how many Major League Baseball games has there been since the start of Major League Baseball? There's been three deaths. What more can you do? How much more netting? I mean, you could do a lot. And I'm surprised that there's not more people injured at games with how fast it comes out and also how crazy people are when there's a damn foul ball. People are nuts. Oh, my God, a foul ball. I better knock this kid out and spill my beer over everybody so I can get a foul ball. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You could tweet at me. Liam Neeson on an apology tour for something he said. For really, not quite sure why he said it, but he did say something, and it was about something that took place some 40 years ago. I think he was trying to make a point, but his apology tour started today. And a man does a cookie. We talked a bit about it last week that he thought was funny at his bakery that caused people to be angry. He apologized. Wait till you hear what he's doing now. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. It's the Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show. Independent in thoughts and punk rock in life. It's the Chad Benson Show. <laughs> yes, indeedy. Chad Benson Show. I'm curious. Trump. Trump seems like he wants to hit some sort of reset button. I just don't think so. Got to be honest with you. I don't think that there. I don't think anybody on the left side of the aisle wants anything he has to offer. Not only that, does it go for the people that are his professional protagonists, the people that are out there who are the Dems who are in the House and the Senate. I think there's a a large portion of this country that wants nothing that he has to offer at all. Zero zilch. As far as they're concerned, he's an awful human being. He's a racist. He's all of these things. So doesn't matter. What he has to offer. There is no reset button big enough. There is no magical men in black. That little thing that goes, and then it wipes the memory. None of that stuff. None of that. So he could say he wants to all all he wants. And he can even try all he can. And at some point in time, you have to say to yourself, I am wasting my breath. And either try to do the thing that you have to do. And that's where the people on the left feel hopeless, just like when Obama was president, the people on the right felt like, oh, my God, he's going to take everything away. He's going to do it. it it's, it's funny because you're not. Stop letting this stuff just eat you up inside. 
I see it on the post all the time, you know, throughout the day. And I see I, it's just how angry people are. And it's just take a deep breath. You know, last night I joked about the fact that, you know, I posted something. I said, come on, you guys have to laugh a little bit, right? That in one of the cabinet meetings when they were talking about Nepal and Bhutan, <laughs> he called it nipple and button. And people, j- I can't laugh at something. like Why can't you? Right? Why can't you? Because he's an idiot. He's ho- it's all he's a he's a four year old. And I just sit back and I'm at this point in time, you were so caught up in whatever it is that's going on that you you just gotta let you do you. There's nothing else. But for the rest of us, I just said he says, This is your business. I said, Yeah, but he's one person. Well, well he's destroying the country. I said, if one person destroys this country, this country doesn't deserve to exist. He's not going to destroy this country. Take a deep breath. Right? Take a deep breath. A little over-exaggeration there. He's not going to destroy this country. This country is so much more than a singular person. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. So Liam Neeson, who's, who's got a movie called Cold Pursuit, it's coming out Friday. And it uh, looks very interesting. It's a revenge movie, the usual stuff. I think he's a snowplow guy in Alaska or somewhere, and, and, and it's kind of a dark comedy action movie. Uh, but he's been giving interviews, as that, that's what you do, and I guess he was with The Guardian, and he was talking about the fact that he was away, came, he, he comes back to uh, wherever he was from, and he found out that one of his good friends, a female, was raped, and he has this just insane reaction to what took place. I asked, did she know who it was? No. What color were they? She said it was a black person. I went up and down areas with a cosh, hoping I'd be approached by somebody. I'm ashamed to say that. And I did it for maybe a week, hoping some black b- would come out of a pub and have a go at me about something, you know, so that I could kill him. It was horrible. Horrible when I think back, but I did that, and I've never admitted that. Yeah, and he said it was 40 years ago. And remember, he, he talked about what was going on at that time. I mean, here's a guy who is in, you know, the throngs of, of what's happening in, 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 in Northern Ireland and all of this stuff and the battle with the Brits and all. It, it, was, it, it was a lot of things. And even he, who went on Good Morning America today, uh, talked a bit uh, about that. And again, it, it's 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 you hear him because already he's been brandished a racist and and this that and the other and once again you know when you're branded something you got to make sure that everybody knows i'm not racist i i i I, this was nearly 40 years ago yeah it doesn't matter though as you know you were being honest and he's talking about the fact that in this movie that he wants revenge and what that can do and how that can blind you. All those things surprised me. But it was this primal yeah. hatred, I guess, that really, really shocked me when I eventually came down to earth yeah. and saw what I was doing, going out looking for a fight. Not the right, that's never... It's, it's, and that's what basis of the every movie, too, that just it goes on and on. And I wish, I wish we had time. Violence breeds violence. Bigotry breeds bigotry. Yeah. Yeah, but... And, and here's the thing. When you bring up something like this, right, a feeling you have, and it's, it's this fear factor of nobody... Everybody's afraid to be honest, right? Like... Uh, we've got a new T-shirt we just produced uh, uh, that has a, an outline of truth in chalk, like it's dead, and next to it is a gun with feelings, and it's smoking. And because even if you want to talk about something, it doesn't matter what it is, right? It doesn't matter if it's if it's weight loss. It doesn't matter if it's something that's going to be better for somebody or to open a dialogue with something that, in the end, it will push it in a direction that's right. We nowadays are terrified to talk about that and you know, a lot of people are saying why why this why now to talk to open up to to talk about these things you know we all pretend we're all kind of you know politically correct mm-hmm. i mean in this country it's the same in my own country too you sometimes just scratch the surface and you discover this racism racism and bigotry and it's there yeah yeah 
think it's safe to say that all of us in life have had a moment where we've thought something untowards towards everybody. Black, white, green, orange, man, woman. It, it, it does. It, it, we've all had that. And if you have it, then you are amazing. And a lot of times it's just the person. Right? Doesn't matter. You're, just, you're the person that is pissing me off at this moment in time. But it's, and I don't think it's even bigotry. I, I've always said, I think everybody out there has some biases in life. Don't know what they are. But everybody has a few biases in their life. That's just it. Then Robin Roberts asked him the question. Do you think you actually would have done if if a if a yes. innocent black man yes. who had nothing to do? Yeah, I know. I th- that that was my feeling. That I did want to lash out. Yes, because my friend was brutally raped, and I thought I was defending her honor. Yeah, he was honest, and he's getting hammered for it. Do I think Liam Neeson is a racist? I do not. I do not think. I don't know what's in his heart, though. But I've not heard any of his co-workers, co-stars, people that work with him, say that he's this racist, racist, vile, evil individual. I think he was trying to be honest as he talked about something, and now it's become something bigger. And now people are like, we got to boycott his movie. we got to stay away from Liam Neeson. And you just sit back and you say, he's having an open dialogue about something, right? Like much with, with Northam. There's a horrible, stupid thing that he did, right? But here's a chance to have a dialogue. And all too often in this country, when there's a chance to have a dialogue, what we do is we placate certain groups and we, quote unquote, scratch the surface, as he said, and then we try to make each other feel good by by virtue signaling. And then we move away, never once dealing with the problem. And that's sad. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter you can tweet at me. We touched on this a little bit. Valentine's cookie. Valentine's, of course, not too far away. And a guy in Washington State thought it would be funny. He makes funny cookies, right? He's a baker, and he makes some funny cookies. Just, just you know, goofy cookies, like nice butt and things of that nature. Well, as he's doing this, and again, he's the baker. He thinks it's funny to do a cookie about, well, the wall. These have always been very popular. Some are a little risque, some are nice. I just uh, try to be funny. People were just going off like, they don't know anything about me. And yet, I was, you know, supposedly this horrible person. The trouble I got into was uh, I just wrote on one, one cookie, I wrote, build that wall. Yes, build that wall, right? He writes it on a cookie, not several cookies. He writes it on a cookie. And in this day and age, all it takes is that, and then it takes a picture, then it goes viral, and then you are a anyone, anyone, yes, you. You'll take racism for 5000 He's a racist. Boom! Uh, this is a photograph that I took of the cookies, specifically the one that says, build that wall. It's, a, it's really hard to see words like that. We were born here, but my parents were um, the stories that you see on the news. People crossing the border just because they want to have a new start. You say something with enough hate, you chant it. You have white supremacists, uh, the alt-right chanting it. It's going to become racial. Yeah. Now. Do I think, like, there's so many cookies. Do I think that, that he's some alt-white guy? I don't know. Maybe he actually is. Maybe he is. Maybe he is. Maybe this has been his entire thing. It's like, this is it, man. People say, hey, what are you going to do for the alt-right, alt-white cause? And this guy's over here. He's like, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to go into banking so I can control finances and deny people of color loans and what are you going to do over there i'm going to do this and blah 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 i'm going to go into the law enforcement so i can go after what are you going to do over there is i'm going to become a baker because i can bake and i can't wait to hand out racist cookies because that is it that's what it's all about well he's now taken back his apology he apologized said look i'm not really political because i don't even know if i believe in the wall i just thought it was something funny Right? He goes, but 
what am I supposed to do? Be quiet because I can't write what I want to or I can't write what they want or what makes them happy? He goes, so now I'm unapologizing. Hashtag sorry, not sorry. It is kind of funny, though. Like, is that... And, and and other people have come out and they've said, hey, hey, you know what? You, uh, uh, this isn't the kind of stuff we want in our town, other business owners. And I love it when it's always an anonymous person. They don't have the cojones to say it to your face. This isn't the kind of people we want in this kind of town. I, isn't that hilarious? Could you imagine saying that to somebody of color? Oh, this is, you're not the kind of person uh, we want in this kind of... But you're, this isn't the kind of business we want in this town. You and your your satanic evil cookies. <laughs> Hashtag sorry, not sorry. Oh, don't give in and don't. I wonder if his cookies are any good. Here's my thing with cookies. I like chocolate chip cookies. That's about it. I tried one of those triple stuffs a couple weeks ago from Oreo. It's too much stuff for me. It just it just just everywhere. It's too much stuff. It's too much. So I don't even like, I, I like Girl Scout cookies because they're everywhere right now. And I, I bought some and I gave them out to people. I don't, I'm not a, I'm just not a big cookie guy. I like, I don't like a lot of sweets. I like chocolate chip cookies, I like some Reese's peanut butter cups. Outside of that, I'm not a big sweet guy. Even ice cream, I'm only a vanilla guy. I'm very boring. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Whew. Sleep last night. Let's take a look at my little sleepy watch here and find out how much sleep I got last night. I got six hours and eight minutes. That is amazing. I know what you're saying, but Chad, that doesn't seem like very very long. I traveled a lot. I didn't have a lot of time sleep. I have to get up extra early today. I was hoping to get five hours. I got six hours and eight minutes of sleep. Thank you, my pillow, because I will tell you this: the mattress I slept on last night, uh, I think, is a bed of nails. But my pillow was with me, my go anywhere pillow. It's incredible. 100% machine washable, dryable, made in the USA, backed by a 10 year warranty. Right now, you've got nothing to lose. Why is that? There's a money back guarantee till March 1st. What are they giving you? Four pillows, two premium, two go anywhere pillows, half the price, free shipping. It really is a no brainer. Get the best sleep of your life, put them to the test. I was skeptical. You be skeptical too. There's nothing to lose. Again, a money back guarantee till March 1st. Call 800 944 4975. Or go to MyPillow.com. When you do, use promo code Benz, and that's how you get the deal. Four pillows, two premium pillows, two go-anywhere pillows, half the price, free shipping. MyPillow.com, MyPillow.com, promo code Benson, or call them at 800-944-4975. Use the promo code Benson. At Chad Benson Show, Twitter, C-H-A-D-B-E-N-S-O-N. It's the Chad Benson Show. No fake outrage here. Just the real thing. The Chad Benson Show. Wow! I feel good. So I'm sitting here today. I'm going over like shoulder. Apparently there's a conspiracy. CNN's done this big thing that maybe, just maybe... That the godfather of soul, James Brown, was actually murdered. Wah, 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 wah. Yeah. His doctor, Dr. Marvin Crawford, said he changed too fast. Something went wrong in that room. He was 17, cause of death at the time. I mean, he was 73, cause of death. They're saying it was heart attack and fluid in lungs because apparently he had pneumonia. Family, friends, and business associates are pushing for a criminal investigation. One pal apparently was so concerned. He took a vial of the singer's blood from an IV tube. Now, his daughter, Yama, declined an autopsy when he died. His sister, Deanna, would not confirm where her dad's remains are even kept. And friends of his third wife, Adrienne Brown, believe she too was murdered. And CNN report that this is on also says he hears rape and abuse allegations leveled at uh, Brown by Jackie Holland or Hollander, who worked with the star in the 80s, did they have something to do with it? I don't know. I just find the whole thing bizarre. Why now? Is there nothing else? Like It was so important to CNN that they actually stopped down in the middle of their day from Trump's going to jail forever because of Russia, 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 or 
some sort of thing that's happening with uh, uh, his uh, inauguration day to say, hey, check this out. It's just it's bizarre. Like, why? Like, now? Really? Really? Speaking of Trump and tonight. Tonight's going to be a great night, and I think the president's going to do an incredible job laying out both what we've accomplished, but also um, a very visionary look forward on what we can accomplish. Sarah Huckabee Sanders, I, I the, what I'm hearing, what I'm seeing is like there's he really kind of wants to reset. And I just we, we don't live in a world now where that works when it comes to certain sides of the political aisle. I think by and large, most people aren't going to pay attention to this tonight. They'll catch some of the highlights, they'll listen to some of the people, and then there'll be a group of people that watches regularly Fox News, MSNBC, CNN, and those kind of things, and who get caught up in this, that will watch it. But those people are already people who've made up their minds where they stand politically. So he's not going to change any of their minds, and the rest of us are just living our life on a day-to-day basis. So for a lot of people, is he really going to change any minds tonight? No. It's a way for both sides to go out there. Stacey Abrams to do it for the Democratic side. And by the way, from what I hear, you've got Bernie, Stacey, and just about anybody who's running for president is going to do something, whether it's Facebook Live or YouTube, to have their rebuttal to Trump. Because uh, you got to do it now. That's just it. The opportunity's here. You don't have to wait for a camera to be in your face. You've got the camera ready to roll right now. 323 538 2423 at Chad Benson Show. Twitter is the Chad Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent in thoughts and punk rock in life. It's the Chad Benson Show. The president is going to lay out uh, what we have accomplished. Um, He's had an incredible and historic first two years in office. You're going to hear him talk about that. You're also going to hear him talk about some of the achievements that we've already had in a bipartisan way, like criminal justice reform. Yeah, bipartisan sounds great. And uh, and when you can have something bipartisan, it's usually because it's completely... Not politically controversial, meaning both bases across the board kind of agree there was time for reform or there was time for something to be done, whether it was criminal justice reform or taking on the opioids things. Nobody nobody says, oh, you know, we really need more opioids on the street. So those things are they're kind of they're they're benign. Nobody really is going to say no. Everybody can row in that direction. But when it comes to the wall, things of that nature, mm, that is politically divisive. And I don't even know if that is so much politically divisive or as if it's the person who wants the wall is the one that is the political division in this, right? Meaning the Democrats wanted this thing before. They voted on it before. So what's changed? The guy who's delivering that message. That's the thing that has changed. The guy delivering the message is changing this. What happens from here tonight? He wants some sort of reset. A reset that's not going to happen no matter what he does. Because there is a portion of the country that didn't vote for him. scattering amounts of Republicans throughout the states who didn't like him, right? A lot of Democrats that didn't like him. A lot of progressives that didn't like him. And some of those Republicans will go back to being Republicans when somebody else is there. But the fact is that there's a lot of people out there that don't want anything he has to offer. And vice versa. Obama was there. The Republicans wanted nothing he had to offer at all, period, case closed, end of story. But to say he's the only divisive one would be an absolute lie because the left has their usual suspects going out and criticizing before 
They've even heard what the speech is because they want no part of it because there's nothing in it for them. The blatant hypocrisy of this president calling for unity is that he is one of the chief reasons Americans feel so divided. No. You don't think we were divided when Obama was president? Let me ask you. If you're on the right side of the aisle, did you like Obama? Did you respect Obama? Did you want anything to do with Obama? Anything to do with Nancy Pelosi? Anything? If you're on the right side of the aisle, if I say Maxine Waters, do you go, solid human being, great individual. If I say AOC, right? Now remember, Maxine Waters has been around for a very long time. Bernie Sanders. Chuck Schumer, Nancy Pelosi. Division's been there. Obama. The division's been there long before this. Has the rhetoric ramped up? I don't know if the rhetoric's ramped up any more than maybe it, it, it had been in the past. Just the difference is, is now somebody can say something in California and somebody in Florida can receive the message instantaneously and that and anonymously in many ways. You may know who the person is or what their code name is, but he or she's not saying it to your face. So do I think there's a chance for a reset? I do not. I do not think there's a chance for the reset for the bases that are entrenched in the left and the right. I don't think so. For everybody else, there's always a chance for something. Trump's going to do some bad things. Some of the stuff he's done, I've not been a fan of. I don't buy some of the stuff. He lies about crap he doesn't need to lie about. I'll say that. And some of the stuff he does, it's good. Right? I'm not just going to say he's great or awful. But do I think there's a reset? I don't think there's a reset. I don't think so. And I think the Democrats know as we head into 2020. And remember, this is the long game. But the long game is much shorter than people realize because you got to position yourself and you got to make sure that the other side, because we've we've given up trying to say, look, you guys are doing a good job, but I think we could even do a better job with our idea. Now it's just like you guys suck. The state of the Trump economy failing America's middle class, the state of the Trump health care failing American families, the state of the Trump administration chaos. The state of Trump foreign policy, woefully backward, inside out. So everything sucks. You got to tell the world that everything sucks. Because the last thing you want to do is go, yeah, the economy's doing okay. We talked to Mark Hamrick, bankrate.com. What do you say? The economy's motor on. Should be doing pretty well this year. After that, we'll see. Right? But right now, it's doing okay. Right? So there's that. Healthcare, I don't know if they're one to talk because I was promised if I like my doctor, I can keep my doctor and I'm going to save $2,500 a year. I've done none of those things like a lot of you haven't either. Do I like the way that the Republicans attacked healthcare to try to fix it and save it when instead they did absolutely nothing to it and maybe just broke it a little bit more than it was already broken? But I can't blame that on Trump because Trump's not passing the law. That's a Republican thing right there. And he's had some hits and misses when it comes to foreign policy. I'm all for getting out of a lot of these places where people hate us. They're living back ass word in the 8th century still. I got no problem getting out of there. I have no problem sitting down and talking to Kim Jong-un and figuring stuff out. Do I think he's made some missteps along the way? Yes. Yes. But show me a politician that hasn't. Show me one. I'm I'm willing to hear. Is there somebody out there that has never made a misstep? Anyone? 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 Nah. Here you have a governor who, you know, after a contentious race, is elected, and then to have these yearbook photos, who even knew medical schools had yearbooks, have him come out, essentially apologize, and then take the apology back. We were talking about how, look, just step out of the way. Let Justin Fairfax step into this, the lieutenant governor, a popular, young, dynamic, rising star in the Democratic Party. And then over the weekend here, you have these new potential allegations against him. You can't imagine what it must be like to be a voter in Virginia, much less a black voter who might be personally offended. This is just, I mean, it really is remarkable. I don't 
think he's going anywhere. I really don't think he is going anywhere as much as people thought he was going to be gone. Think about the story was breaking Friday, started to pick up steam. By Saturday, it had changed from I'm embarrassed by these photos, I apologize, to hey, I'm in a moonwalk up here, and I don't think those photos are me. And to Sunday, it was hot and heavy all over the shows. To Monday, simmering down a little bit. To today, we're moving on to the State of the Union and what will be tomorrow. And I think he may survive this thing. I think he may survive this thing, which is is amazing, right, in this day and age. And I know there are people out there on the right screaming, oh, my God, this is a double standard. This is I think this is a case study of action. A case study, to me, it's always a case study of action. What is your actions like? This is his childhood friend. Her name is Carla. She is black. And she talks first and foremost about the pictures themselves and maybe what Ralph, as she calls him, uh, thought of said pictures. What the governor did was took ownership of a picture that had his name as a prominent heading. But looking at that for the first time, I can't imagine how gobsmacked he must have been, just as I was disgusted. Um, Thinking it was photoshopped is what I thought. And, And who knows what he thought seeing it the first time. Who knows what went through his mind? I don't. You don't think but he saw that the picture person, before? The person I know, the person, if Ralph says he didn't see it before, he didn't see it before. And it's really weird because they're now coming under fire, the school, because apparently there are other photos inside of these yearbooks that are much clo- like that are they're far removed from him have nothing to do with him that people are finding that are racist that are wholly inappropriate i uh, it's bizarre it's a weird thing and so did he or didn't he know uh, his again i didn't even know they had do colleges have yearbooks i don't even do do they do colleges have year how do they do that like was like if you have fifty thousand people in your college, not all fifty thousand are going to be in your yearbook. That's a huge book. Is it like a yearbook per like if you're in business? I I I don't know. But the fact that they did, and now they're finding more and more things, is is very interesting. But this is what she said about him. The good that I know my friend is capable of doing, the good that he's done for the Commonwealth to date is going to win itself out if he's allowed to to continue as governor. I don't think he's going anywhere. I don't. And his embattled lieutenant governor, and remember the lieutenant governor, right, is not like his running mate. And people were excited. They thought, okay, here's a here's a young guy, an upstart. Uh, guy who's coming on in and he's African-American and then these allegations come out and all of a sudden he's being asked questions about said allegations about whether or not the governor himself is releasing and or pushing this narrative of did you sexually assault a woman in 2004 at the Democratic National Convention? Uh, you believe that the governor's team is spreading misinformation about your team. Can you comment on that, please, sir? And so, you believe it? You, I, you know, I, I don't know uh, precisely where this is coming from. I, you know, we've heard uh, different things, but but here's the thing. Uh, does anybody think it's any coincidence that on the eve uh, of potentially uh, my being elevated, that that's when this uncorroborated smear comes out? Does anybody believe that's a coincidence? Uh, I don't I don't think anybody believes that's a coincidence. Wow, that's uh, that is just it's uncomfortable. And he's got political aspirations, so he wants that. But I've said, while it's a horrible picture, it's an awful picture, go back 35 years. If you would have saw something like that, were you going to stop down and say, this guy needs to be destroyed or any of these things need to happen? Probably not. And again, we live in our sensibilities of the modern world, our woke world that we live in now. No, we probably wouldn't have. The way I think he handled the apology, non-apology tour is very interesting. But the fact that it's quieted down so much and our our because, you know, tomorrow is going to be dominated with State of the Union and who knows what else over the next day or two. I bet you he's going, I hope he declares a state of emergency because this will become that gnat like moment because we have that attention span of a gnat and it's gone. The big thing is, can he govern? And work with people. And 
I think he can. There are some others that are coming out and saying, you know, I can work with him. You know, I don't think he's a bad guy. I've known him for a long time. To me, actions are the most important thing. A lot of people have lip service. A lot of people do. But actions are far more important. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. We've got a Twitter poll. We'll talk about that. But first, let's just say there's a burglar. When do you want to know the burglar is around your house? When they're around your house, not when they're in your house. That's bad. In is bad, out is better. That's what Blink is all about. Take, for instance, a guy named John. Didn't want to use his last name. Him and his family relax and watch a little TV. Boom. Somebody tries to get in their house. Blink alerts them. Away they go. That's what it's all about. These cameras are amazing. Motion-activated indoor and outdoor cameras, wire-free, so easy to set up, so easy. Sets up in minutes, runs on two AA batteries, lasts up to two years. And the other thing is there's a smartphone app. So they got the Blink smartphone app, and then you get live feed options. What that does is allow you to check your home, right? And for all of us, it's that spying on your pet a lot of times. What's going on with my pet? Oh, really? Fluffy? Get down. For me, it's Winston. I'll sit there and Winston will wander by. It's hilarious. My giant lizard. Totally affordable. No subscription, no contracts. Blink camera systems make great gift. They're a brilliant way to monitor your package delivery. Visit BlinkProtect.com slash Benson. BlinkProtect.com slash Benson. BlinkProtect.com slash Benson. Blink is an Amazon company. At Chad Benson Show, Twitter, C-H-A-D-B-E-N-S-O-N. It's the Chad Benson Show. Feel free to punk this punk rocker any time of the day or night. Reach Chad on Twitter at Chad Benson Show and on Instagram at Chad Benson Show. And oh yeah, the Chad Benson Show on Facebook too. Punk that. A third straight running play. The Super Bowl that was short on superlatives also was something of a disappointment for bookies in Las Vegas, where they say the nearly $146 million in bets on the big game represents a drop of 8% from last year. But bettors had legal options for the first time this year, thanks to the Supreme Court decision lifting the federal ban on sports betting. In Mississippi, fans wagered around $4.7 million. In New Jersey, they placed nearly $35 million in bets, and the House lost. Sportsbooks ended up paying out $4.6 million more than they took in. Ooh. Better Axe, who last year won $10 million on the Eagles, lost $3.8 million this year, I think, or three point one, something like that. But a person threw a $250 bet down on the Rams to score three points at 400 to 1 and won $100,000. That is winner, winner, chicken dinner right there. It was probably somebody who was like, ah, oh, put it there. The Rams scored three points. Oh, man, went 30. Ah, oh, never mind. And now he's probably looking for that ticket. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Do love hearing from you. Imagine this, if you will. $190 million in cryptocurrency locked away, and no one can get to it because the Canadian owner of the exchange died unexpectedly last year without telling anyone the password. Gerald Cotton was only 30. His widow, a woman named Jennifer Robertson, says she has access to his computer, but the company's business is all encrypted, and she can't find the password or the recovery key. The mystery deepens as some online wonder how diligently Robertson has searched for the password. Some are even questioning whether Cotton has really died. She has hired an expert to help her out, but so far, nothing. What? Could you imagine that? So apparently there's a computer and a server. Nobody can get in it, and inside of there is $190 million. Super tough to get into. Not going to be cracked easily. $190 million of cryptocurrency sitting right there. Or is it? Maybe they're in Fiji. Just saying. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You're going to watch tonight the Soto or the Sotu. Take the poll at Chad Benson Show. Terrence K. Williams, a conservative comedian, joins me straight ahead. Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show.
independent in thought and punk rock in life. It's the Chad Benson Show. It is a crazy world we live in. There are deplorables out there, and then there are deplorables that make you laugh. And currently, they're on tour. Conservative comedian Terrence K. Williams joins us right now. And you guys are on tour in a world of politics that's uber serious and divided. You're using laughter to get your message out, which is different than a lot of what's going on in the establishment media and the establishment comedy world. Hey, Chad. Thanks for having me on. Uh, you know what? The conservatives, Trump supporters, the free thinkers, we can't even watch TV without liberals bashing America, bashing the president. We can't even go to an event without somebody bashing Trump and bashing America. So that's why me and a few other comedians are doing this deplorables tour to bring some entertainment to the conservative world so everybody can have something to laugh at and enjoy. Because the liberals are no longer funny. They're biased and unfunny. You know, Terrence, it's it's funny, uh, having done comedy for a while and, and been out there, it's easy to wander out on stage and make fun of, of Trump. I always looked at somebody like Johnny Carson, who was, you know, in, in the business. The greatest thing to do as a comic back in the 70s and 80s was to get on stage with Johnny. And hopefully after you did well, he'd invite you over to the couch. But he took shots at both sides. We're at a point now where we don't. It's like one side is a free for all. The other side has no voice. And you're trying to give some voice and laughter to a lot of people out there who think, man, we just is there anybody out here who laughs with us? Exactly, because as, like right now, a lot of Trump supporters, free thinkers, conservatives, and when I say free thinkers, a lot of liberals they are not free thinkers because they 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 try to control you. They are are they are control freaks, and, and a lot of them are not free thinkers at all, and, and 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 they look down on people who think for themselves, and but so they leave us out. You know, they 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 leave us with nothing to do. You know, they don't entertain this side, the right side, people who think for themselves. So somebody got to do it. Somebody has to do it. And we're, we're not only bringing entertainment to the right side, but we're also rallying the base. And we all want Trump to win in 2020 at the same time. So that's what we're doing. Uh, talking to a comedian, he's a conservative comedian, uh, uh, Terrence K. Williams. You can check him out on uh, on Twitter, where you guys, you, 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 that's where you you make a name for yourself and you do your stuff on Twitter. But you're a comic, and going out and doing comedy, uh, like a lot of these uh, people that are joining you, the reality is, is you're on stage night in and night out when you guys aren't together with other comedians. Uh, they must feel the wrath of the left at times too, because great comedians that are out there who use comedy to poke fun at stereotypes and stuff nowadays are having to kind of flinch and watch what they're saying, watch what they're tweeting, or looking back at their tweets, i.e. Kevin Hart from years ago, wondering themselves, when is the, the mob going to come for me and, and, and change the way I do things? You know what? The mob is coming for you. The mob is coming for everybody. They are coming for you, but it's all about if you let them win. See, they can come for me, but I'm not going to let them win. I'm not going to apologize for anything I've said. I'm not apologizing at all. I don't care. I'm not apologizing. I don't care if, if I didn't mean it. I don't care if I changed. I'm not apologizing. What was said is what was said, and that's the end of the discussion. The past is the past. I'm not apologizing for the past. And yeah. Kevin Hart, look, 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 man, it is ridiculous. Now, after Kevin Hart apologized, then this fake story come, comes out about this guy from Empire who claims he was beat up by some, by some Trump supporters because he was gay. They went back and said it was Kevin Hart's fault. <laughs> Crazy. Everything's Ridiculous. Kevin Hart's fault. Everything Everything's is Kevin, Kevin Hart's, Hart's fault, fault now. Everything Absolutely. Is his fault. Everything is conservative's fault. Everything is Trump supporters' fault. Everything is everybody else's fault besides the control freak liberals. And not yeah. all of them are control freaks, because I have some liberal friends. But majority of them, they're getting that way. Something is going on. And we got to You know it. what? It's funny, though, because I've got friends who are on both sides of the aisle, some extremely right and some extremely left. And we always laugh about the fact that the, and, and there are people out there on both sides of the aisle. They, they, they don't want they don't want information. They want affirmation of their stuff. And they and, they, and doesn't matter. They're, they're MAGA through and through or they can't stand Trump through and through. 
but you know, you deal with it. Being a, being a comedian, here you are. You know, you're out there. You're on tour and stuff like that. You got other fellow comedians who I'm sure are not huge fans of Trump. But you managed to keep friendships. Did you find it weird that that people based their world on certain things like politics, where it's just a small thing that people just freak out about in so many ways? Yeah, you know. I don't agree with people who say, oh, I can't be your friend if you're a conservative. Oh, I can't be your friend if you are a liberal. That is so stupid. That is so stupid because you're basically saying this person has to think like you and be like you. And that is and, – and, 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 and even if a conservative – so if you have a Trump supporter and say, oh, I can't be friends with liberals. I can't be friends, you know, with a person who think like this then you're no different from the liberals who do the same thing to to conservatives. Everybody has a mind of their own. I'm not here to change the way liberals think. I'm not here to do that. I'm here to express my views and have and express my and, and and I have an uncensored thought. Comedians, our job is to deliver uncensored thoughts and that's what I do. And just because I don't agree with a liberal, that don't mean I can't be friends with them. Now but if they own some foolishness I probably can't be around them because I don't be around nothing foolish. But that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> and, you know, a lot of my friends uh, from high school, some of them say that I, I, they told me I can't come to the, to the high school reunion. They told me that I'm kicked out of the black community. So I said, well, what does that mean that I'm kicked out the black community? I said, well, what is the disadvantage? Because I never knew what the benefit was. <laughs> so what you <laughs> mean I'm to, uh, Half of y'all owe me money. So pay me back before you kick me out. Talking about I can't talking... come to the barbecue no more. I don't care. Yeah, go go to the barbecue, man. Get, get what you deserve and then get on out of there if that's what they want to do. We talked to Diamond and Silk on numerous occasions say the same thing. People tell them they were kicked out of the black community and, and they were just like, oh, oh, okay, I didn't I didn't know that. Uh, talking to Terrence okay. uh, K. Williams, who is a, a comedian, a conservative comedian. You can see him on Fox and many other things. Follow him along on the old Twitter there as well. You guys are out and about. Who's with you guys on this Deplorables comedy tour that is out there? Who And how did you guys connect when I mean, you guys look looking around one day in a room just kind of gave a wink hey yeah you, you know you, was there a maga handshake or something what was it <laughs> so uh we have steve mcgrew steve mcgrew uh, he's also known as mud flap he's he has a country music award he's been on comedy central we have michael michael loftus he's a hollywood he, well, he used to be a big hollywood guy a writer a screenwriter. He's a, a he's done Fox and Friends. He's done uh, Comedy Central. Also, he's done a lot of stuff. He's a vet in the comedy world. Then we have these three girls named the Deplorable Choir. They are a viral sensation online, and we're all mutual. You know, I know somebody that know them, and they knew me, and I followed them, and they followed me, and we got together. Said we got to do something. Let's work together, and and let's change the game. Let's pave the way. For, for people who are scared to come out as a conservative in the entertainment world and in, in, in the world period, so we got together and now we're going on a uh, uh, on a 15 city tour. Which well, we're going to do 50 cities this year, but right now we have about 15 dates available. Nice, for, fantastic. Yep. Mm-hmm. So you guys, you played Brea, uh, which is great, great place. I've been there, uh, done that. And uh, But you guys are going to be out in Albany, then Cleveland, then Nashville, uh, traveling around the country. People want to say, hey, I want to check that out. I want to go out there and see what the deplorables are like. I want to see what this, this comedy is like. How do they check out where you guys are going to be? Oh, yeah. So what they can do, people can uh, pe- uh, people can go to deplorableshow.com deplorableshow.com or they can go to my Facebook, Twitter and Instagram at Terrence K. Williams and everything is there. So you can go on social media and find it or you can go to deplorableshow.com or go to Terrence K. Williams everywhere on social media and you will see it. And we'll be everywhere. Right on, my man. Well, fantastic. Look forward to seeing you. Hopefully, you guys will be in and around, uh, maybe coming out here to uh, uh, to Phoenix or Sacramento and uh, a few of the other places I'm going to be at. And who knows, maybe we'll all hook up and uh, and you guys will throw me on stage for five or ten minutes. Oh, yes. We will throw you on stage without your permission. You're getting on stage. <laughs>
Sounds good to me, my man. Sounds good to me. Appreciate you getting up early as always. Again, you know, anytime a comic has to get up before, say, 8 o'clock at night, it's tough. Uh, Terrence K. Williams, thanks so much, man. We'll talk to you soon. Talk to you soon. Thank you, brother. Thanks. Bye. At Chad Benson Show, Twitter, C-H-A-D-B-E-N-S-O-N. It's interesting. I've seen some of the stuff. And again, in, in a day and age where it's tough, then the best thing you can do is you, you, you find that niche area and say, if this is the audience that's, that's going to have me, then I'll just stay in this lane and we'll go from there. Because you can carve that niche where maybe 20 years ago you couldn't do that. Now you can do that. And you, and you don't need the world to laugh. You just need enough to pay your bills. Chad Benson Show. Running with scissors sounds great compared to this. Say woo! Study finds marijuana 100 times less toxic than alcohol. World Health Organization officially declares bacon as harmful as cigarettes. Those two stories were shared more than a million and a half times on Facebook. And according to the fact-checking site Health Feedback, they're both not true at all. Scientists for Health Feedback studied 100 of the most shared medical stories online, mostly on Facebook, and found that almost half of them contained misleading or even harmful information. Not surprisingly, trusted sites like Time, NPR, even here at ABC, had health stories that were proven to be mostly accurate. <laughs> I think she sounds surprised. Even here at ABC, where we kind of just full of crap, we found out that some of the stuff that we post, it's actually pretty accurate. Yes. And you know who shares most of those things? Older people. They see something and they share it and they take it as gospel. And if you want to believe something like bacon is great for you, when we all know it tastes great, but if you overindulge on it on a daily basis it's probably not the greatest thing but this is another example of things that we do when sharing and let's be real sharing is caring it is sharing is caring it is very much caring when i share it means because i care but nobody does any research i had somebody send me something last night and i'm like that's not true it's just not. Yes, it is. It's not true. 20 minutes later. It's not true. You're right. But they believed it to be. And the person that sent it to them had already posted it without going, hey, should I take another step? Which is annoying and sometimes trying to find out the truth and piece together stuff, whether it's medical stuff or political stuff or any of this stuff is tough. But still. We just share. We see a headline. And we're like, God, it's got to be true. It's got to be true. A study that appears in Nature Microbiology is My the first cross-sectional magazine. large-scale one that shows certain strains of bacteria in the human gut are less abundant in depressed patients. The publisher of the study says we cannot say whether the bacteria are causing depression or whether losing the bacteria causes depression. Certain bacteria are thought to have anti-inflammatory properties. Future treatment could include the next generation probiotics. Healthy bacteria would be replaced to treat things like depression. So now it's bacteria in the gut. This is the thing, too, when, when you get so much information, right? And it's tough because I've always say you've got to look just like when it's it's people when you look at the political ads that are run. I don't care what the person's saying. I just need to know who's running the ad. I can tell you what they're saying. Right. Whoever's running this ad, there is an angle for that paid for by who? Paid for by the da 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 paid for by the da 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 da. That's all you need to know. Who's paying for this? Right? So certain material in my gut is bad for depression or isn't bad for depression. It goes back to that whole medical thing. Somebody's going to run out and never run with it. And it's like sometimes you'll look at these studies and they'll say, you know, so-and-so says that if you look at a screen for X, Y, and Z amount of hours, it'll destroy your retina and da-da. And then you look and you find out, well, who put that together? Oh, it's the Contacts Institute of America that put that study together. And you can craft polls and studies to do just about anything you want. I could go out today and I could find people. I think Coca-Cola did a few years ago. That the health benefits of Coca-Cola, if you pay somebody enough, they will figure something out in a way to say, let me tell you what the benefit is of this. 
state o the union but it's not just like i in fairness have been invited to next year's state of the union already which i believe i should go should i wear something funky i feel like i should wear something crazy like i want to be seen right like just uh, just go all just totally crazy like part Lenny Kravitz, part Elton John. <laughs> Just, whoa, look at Chad. Oh, uh, But I, I, I think I'm going to go next year. And I've already been uh, invited next year. But part of that is being the guest. It's not just the president and the speaker and a few other people. No, you can invite people to this thing. And a sign the president will hit border security hard tonight. The guests in the first lady's box include a family of an elderly <laughs> couple murdered in their home last month by an undocumented immigrant. The most unconventional guest tonight, 11-year-old Joshua Trump, a sixth grader from Delaware who is not related to the president, but says he has been bullied because of his last name yeah and there are people there from the synagogue shooting first responders some people who survived it uh there is a plethora of people on all sides you know people wearing different you know some people wearing all white and there's just there, there's a lot of uh, of people that are going to be there and they're all representing something and that's usually kind of interesting i think reagan was the first one to do it but now it's part of what this thing is Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. You gonna watch it? You're not gonna watch it. It's our poll question day. Most of you are not gonna watch it. Yeah, you're just like, eh, nah, I don't think so. Most of you are like, eh, nah, pass. Forty one percent of you say no. Thirty eight percent say yes. Some maybes. Some just the highlights. Tweet at me at Chad Benson Show three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three. My pillow is incredible. I've got my go anywhere pillow. I got a lot of radio still to do all day tomorrow as well. Lots, and I'm talking tons of radio. You hear one show? Guess what? I'm usually doing three or four different things on top of other shows. I need my rest, and that's what my pillow gives me. I was skeptical at first. I travel a lot, and having the go anywhere pillow is amazing. It really is. It is a no-brainer right now. you got nothing to lose. They have a money-back guarantee till March 1st. You're going to get four my pillows, two premium pillows, two go-anywhere pillows, half the price, free shipping, made in the USA, 100% machine washable and dryable, 10-year warranty, and again, nothing to lose. It's a no-brainer. You have a money-back guarantee. Do what I did. You're skeptical. Put it to the test. you got nothing to lose. You have all to gain. More sleep, which is going to be better for your productivity and so many other things. Get it now. 1-800-944-4975 or go to MyPillow.com. Use promo code Benson. It's MyPillow.com, promo code Benson. Four pillows, two premium pillows, two go-anywhere pillows, half the price, free shipping. 800-944-4975 or MyPillow.com. Use promo code Benson. At Chad Benson Shows, your Twitter, C-H-A-D-B-E-N-S-O-N. Follow along with us on Twitter, on Instagram, and yes, on the old Facebook as well, the Chad Benson Show, because it is. The Chad Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent in thoughts and punk rock in life. It's the Chad Benson Show. I don't even know why he wants to come and give the State of the Union. Uh, the State of the Union under him has not been good. And he has been divisive. And I think he's putting us all in harm's way. And so he is not worthy of being listened to. He lies over and over again, like I said. I just can't imagine what he's going to try and say. But since he is a great liar, he'll say anything. Uh, because he's capable of saying anything without facts, without research. And so I'm not looking forward to his State of the Union. And I hope that people will turn the television off. Okay, that's Maxine Waters. And as we know, she doesn't say anything crazy at all. She's just as level head as they get, never tries to stir the pot. So de- her and AOC say, don't watch this thing. Then my question is, if I don't watch it, which I have to, because I'll be commenting on it, working on it all night long. 
But if I didn't watch it, that means I don't have to watch Bernie and I don't have to watch Stacey Abrams, right? I don't have to watch any of them. Well, you have to watch those to give the rebuttal. Well, if I don't know what they're rebutting, why am I watching it? At that point in time, I don't know what they're talking about, right? They're just, you know, I mean, I think we all know what they're going to say. Bernie's going to go, it's always the 1%. Need to take all the money, 1%. Pharmaceutical prices, too high. The 1%, it's kind of the same. Global warming. Rich people, one-tenth of one-tenth of one-eighth point four-tenth of one percent own 99.56 percent of the world's population. So it means I don't have to watch any of it, right? No. i watch it. Look, I think we know what's coming tonight. The whole talk is it's going to be about unity, right? It's going to be about unity. It's going to be, there's no you, there's no unity here. Right. There's no unity in what's going to take place tonight because nobody at all on either side wants to be united on certain things unless it's really very non-political, meaning everybody, the majority of the country was kind of good with prison reform i mean you get the extremes on one side is you didn't go far enough and the really extremes on the other side are like ah you should make sure they stay in jail forever but the majority of people like 90 percent, were like yeah this is a good thing right opioid nobody said hey we need more opioid it, w- those things are very non-political because we're all kind of rowing in the same direction like where are you going i'm going this way well i'm going this way too no way but the minute you start talking about border security, where are you going? I'm rolling in this direction. Well, I'm going over here. Right? That's what happens. But they've got some stuff done. But none of it's also not interesting. They're not fighting. We like the fighting. We we'll watch them fight. But we know what Trump's going to talk about tonight. Right? It's pretty simplistic. He's going to come out. He's going to hit out there. Right. And Trump's going to have to try to make sure that everybody understands what this is all about tonight with border security. What I can tell you is he is as committed today as he's ever been to making sure we get real border security. That includes a wall. Uh, and he'll make that case tonight. Yeah. He's going to try to sell it. Here's the thing. The only people buying are the people who have already bought. Nobody who's watching this tonight is probably sitting on the, for lack of a better term, the fence when it comes to this, right? Nobody is. Because most common sense people go, yeah, we could use some barriers in certain places, and we definitely need better technology. It's a a lot of things we can do. It's not just one or the other, right? It's a little bit over here, a little little over there. But for politics in, in these situations, because of the politics of the politics, you have to choose one or the other. You have to. And then the response will come, and tonight Stacey Abrams will be delivering that. Stacey Abrams, the former gubernatorial candidate in Georgia, will be delivering the Democrats' response. It's an unprecedented move and and a high-profile assignment for someone who just lost in the midterms. But Democratic leaders see her as a rising star and are encouraging her to seek office again, possibly even for Senate. Yeah, they're pushing her for that. They think she's a rising star. A lot of people are angry that she didn't get the same kind of pub that Beto get. You know, Beto got Beto. You know, Beto was. Here's the thing: her story is great, but just because your story's great doesn't mean you're a great star. Here's a case in point: the best baseball player in baseball is Mike Trout. It's not even close. Who? Mike Trout plays for the Anaheim Angels. Who exactly? Not even close. The person that gets the most attention, probably, Bryce Harper. Why? He's loud. He's obnoxious, right? Aaron Judge, some of these guys. Why? Because they're in your face. They're on television, do all these kind of things. Just because you're a, quote, unquote, rising star and you've got a lot of great things doesn't mean that that translates into success. And in this day and age, in politics in particular, it is as much about the entertainment factor and grabbing the people's attention as it is anything else, which is weird, but that's the reality of it. That is. But she'll deliver it tonight, and I can already tell you what she's going to say. He's divisive. He's horrible. It's about the 1%. It's, 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 it's all the same. But as far as unity goes, neither side really wants unity. 
because that's not good for business. And in the end, it's their business they care about the most. So why should there be anything other than the usual that goes along with these two? which is fighting, 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 and pointing out everything wrong the other side did, and vice versa. The state of the Trump economy, failing America's middle class. The state of the Trump health care, failing American families. The state of the Trump administration, chaos. The state of Trump foreign policy, woefully backward, inside out. Chuck Schumer. Everything sucks. Eh, wrong. Economy seems to be pretty good. Talked to our buddy Mark Hamrick last week, right? Bankrate.com, smart dude, says, yeah, economy's motoring along. Looks like we're going to get through this year. Again, another good year. Economy looks like it's going all right. Right? Foreign side of things, uh, it depends. You know, I like the fact that we're getting out of some of these places that I don't think we should be in, and we sure in the hell shouldn't have been in as long as we have been which many Democrats agreed with and wanted us out of those things. But now that Trump wants to do it, and there are some other things in the way that he's handled certain things, that, yeah, I'll agree with with some of that stuff. But once again, you have to go on. This could be it. Unemployment could be zero, 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 zero. The economy could be growing at 10% a quarter. Everybody could be getting massive raises, and prices could be falling. And he'd he'll still have to come out and say, it's awful. It's just the worst. It's disgusting. I don't even know how we're going to survive. The nation doesn't have that much longer to live because of this guy. That's what happens in politics. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Love hearing from you. got a poll question up. You're going to watch tonight at all. You're going to be going to pay any attention to this thing tonight. Maybe yes, maybe no. Some of you kind of, others of you not so much. Uh, Right now, about 36% say yeah, 43% say nah, 15% of you say maybe, and 6% say yeah, I'll watch the highlights of tonight. I could see that. Are you a workaholic? I am. I got here so early. I got up this morning, and not, I'm not going to be a little braggadocious, but I went and worked out. I swam about mm, three quarters of a mile, but I worked out really hard yesterday, so I just wanted to just work out a little bit. So, uh, and I'll be working very late tonight. And but I am a workaholic. And they did a new survey, and it's very interesting about workaholics because when I was looking at this. Some people are like for me, I love what I do. So it's not I I enjoy it. I get excited. Sunday nights, I've worked jobs where Sundays awful. By about four o'clock, especially in the winters, the sun's going down. It's just awful. I just did. No. For me, I get excited. I know I'm working, I'm getting I'm getting excited, I'm already doing stuff, putting stuff together. It's part of who I am, it's just how I'm made. But for a lot of people, they talked about that say about 58% of Americans are workaholics, right? 53% were admittedly stressed out. And here's some of the things Americans work four hours a week for free, they burn at least another four hours just thinking about their job. That's nuts. But 28% say their job obsession is more than just a strong desire to succeed. It stems from financial necessities. Some people say it is the want to succeed, right? But here's the thing that we've talked about before is our eyes aren't made for looking at the screens. And we talk about how long we look at the screens. Just in work alone, on average, they say about 7.5 hours a day. About 35% of the people spend at least nine hours a day focused on the screen. But when it comes to, yeah, I can see that. People wake up in the morning. What do you do? A lot of people, they check their emails, right? See if something's going on. So you check your emails. Even when you're on vacation, you're doing that. You're taking less vacation because you're worried about losing your job. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. But the world is getting better. And that's the thing I always want to emphasize. The world is getting better. You hear everybody on both sides of the aisle scream about how horrible the world is. And I saw this today and I started laughing. What country eats the most meat? 
Well, obviously, we consume the most meat, right? We do. Brazil, by the way, r- rising big time. They're number two, Canada, UK, China. But the thing that made me laugh is the fact that middle-income countries are growing so fast that meat consumption's actually up everywhere. What was once seen as a luxury is now seen somewhat as a staple. It shows you how good things have come and how far we have come. But poultry, number one, pork, number two, beef, number three, still, as far as consumption in the U.S. of A. Speaking of meat, it's called a segue, kids. Butcher box, incredible. Organic, free range, from the earth. Clean eating. That's what butcher box gives you. No, no antibiotics, no hormones, right? And they spread it all out. Let me let me tell you what they've got for you coming right here on this offer. You are going to, uh, your stomach and your heart's just going to tear up a little bit. It's so amazing. But you don't want any of that nasty stuff in there. Their, their, their pork is incredible. I smoked some over the weekend. It's just ridiculous. Now they've got sockeyed salmon, sustainably harvested from Bristol Bay, Alaska. Their, their chickens are free-range, organic, and their grass-fed and grass-finished beef is absolutely insane. Free shipping. You get a month's worth of delicious meats and cuts like you're not going to find anywhere else less than 6 bucks a meal. Boom. That's incredible. That is incredible. This is what I'm doing for my listeners. Two free cuts of filet mignon, the most tender premium cut of beef from ButcherBox. Free bacon, 20 bucks off your first box when you sign up at ButcherBox.com. It's over a $50 value. Two. I mean, two amazing cuts of filet. The most tender. Incredible. Free bacon, 20 bucks off. Sign you up, you say. How do you do it? Simple and easy. Go to ButcherBox.com slash Chad. ButcherBox.com slash Chad. ButcherBox.com slash Chad. It's the Chad Benson Show. Deep states? Uh, no. Deep doo-doo? Yeah. The Chad Benson Show. Subpoenas issued overnight, Sarah, to the inaugural committee for all kinds of information, possible foreign contacts. Are you confident no one performed any illegal actions on the president's inaugural committee? What I do know uh, at this point is this has nothing to do with the White House. The common thread is a hysteria over the fact that this president became president. Mm. Uh, the common thread is that there is so much hatred out there that they will look for anything to try to create and tie problems to this president wait a minute people pay money to have access to the president of the united states is this this is new right no it's not new it's not remember when you have power in a certain area the money is going to go where that power is because they're going to court that power and guess what a lot of times that power wants access to that money to help keep them in power And that's not always a good thing, and that's how you get crony capitalism across the board where both sides of the aisle keep laughing as they're taking money, all the while saying the other side's horrible, all the while making it tougher for businesses and things to operate and to expand a truly free market. That's the frustration people have because of rules and regulations that a lot of times are put in place to what? To hurt that free market competition. Yeah, if I give the president a million bucks, I expect a handshake, a picture, and 30-second conversation about something. Wouldn't you? No matter what side of the aisle you're on? president has asked everyone to be cooperative throughout the investigation. He himself has been. They've turned over millions of pages of documents. Uh, the fact that those things have taken place literally have absolutely nothing to do with the president. Well, and they have everything to do with the fact that people are spending their entire life doing nothing but trying to find negatives when, in fact, the president has been incredibly successful. He's had two of the most successful years we've ever seen under any first-term president. Yeah, just ask him. He'll tell you. He'll probably tell you that tonight. Greatest in the history of the greatest. It'll be interesting uh, uh, to see where this goes. But campaign finance is not great. It's just, it, it's, these are like those secondary f- violations that college football coaches get because they, ta- you know, they text somebody or called somebody one too many times. Right? This isn't what they're looking for. It's just another thing. But I think they're getting closer to subpoenaing and trying to get a hold of his tax returns. And that will be interesting. 
It will be. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Ah, oh, fake news is everywhere. Study finds marijuana 100 times less toxic than alcohol. World Health Organization officially declares bacon as harmful as cigarettes. Those two stories were shared more than a million and a half times on Facebook. And according to the fact-checking site Health Feedback, they're both not true at all. Scientists for Health Feedback studied 100 of the most shared medical stories online, mostly on Facebook, and found that almost half of them contain misleading or even harmful information. Not surprisingly, trusted sites like Time, NPR, even here at ABC, had health stories that were proven to be mostly accurate. Yeah, and some that aren't mostly accurate. It's not always accurate. Always look who does the stu- study. But I tell you what, it's people who don't do anything but see something and they share it. They don't bother to look. I had somebody send me something last night, and I'm like, that's not true. And they're like, yeah, it totally is. My friend sends it to me, from, and I said, it's not true. And then a little bit later, yeah, you're right, it's not true. But it's incredible what people will share. We are our own worst enemies and stuff like this. It's the Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show. Independent in thought and punk rock in life. It's the Chad Benson Show. The president has made very clear he is willing to do the deal on DACA, TPS, new immigration judges, border patrol agents, humanitarian needs, technology, uh, drones, everything. But it also must include include a physical barrier. When you hear that, right? Like, okay, take take off your right or left. When you hear, let's listen to this again. When you hear this. Listen to what's being offered. The president has made very clear he is willing to do the deal on DACA, TPS, new immigration judges, border patrol agents, humanitarian needs, technology, uh, drones, everything. But it also must include include a physical barrier. So DACA, TPS. Remember, DACA originally was 250,000 up to between TPS and DACA. uh, So the protected status and DACA would be about a million. As well as... The technology, which everybody's screaming for, but he wants barriers, right? He wants a barrier. And I say he doesn't have to be barrier everywhere. Some places are so remote and that if somebody gets to that point, it's almost like, well, you got there. It's uh, Come on. In. I mean, it, it's that kind of. So that doesn't sound unreasonable, right? You can hate the person's personality. I get that. He is divisive. Let's be real. He is. But anybody is. Trump is as divisive as Obama was to the people on the right. People on the left don't feel like there's any hope. It's a bad guy. It's a horrible person destroying the nation. I'm here to tell you right now, one human being is not going to destroy our nation. I don't care how bad of a person you think he is. Right? The people that can destroy our nation, that's us. That's you, that's me, that's collectively everybody. But when you listen to that, I don't find that to be unreasonable. The problem is the person delivering that has at times been unreasonable, and the people receiving in that have at times been unreasonable. You put that together, then you have unreasonables trying to reason with one another, and it doesn't work. It doesn't work at all. That's that. I was talking to somebody yesterday. I said, Chad, you don't like the wall? I said, no. I said, I think the wall in certain areas will be fine. Do I think it's the end all to be all? No, I think you have to do everything. That includes the visa program, which is flawed and broken. And how many of these people are coming here and they're staying here? Whether they say two thirds of the people that are here now illegally and coming here illegally and staying here for the last umpteen years or people that are using what our airports as their port of entry. And they're overstaying their visas, right? As well as our actual ports where the big ships roll in. 
besides the southern border. This has got to be everything and then the enforcement of the law. But the question I said is, I don't think it's the end all to be all. But does it hurt anything to put barriers in certain places? Does it hurt anything? Not everywhere. And they're like, no. I was okay. That's just it. But when you listen to that, that doesn't sound unreasonable. Again, the problem is the people that are delivering the message view the other person as completely unreasonable for political reasons and sometimes for personality reasons. So there you go. That's what you're going to have. So tonight's State of the Union is going to be interesting. It's supposed to be about unity. It's supposed to be about a lot of stuff. Uh, and there is stuff out there. There's absolutely stuff out there that they can pat themselves on the back and say, look at what we have done. Yes, he'll talk about criminal justice reform, prescription drug bill, which are possible areas of reconciliation, but there's a lot of ground to cover before he can get there. There's resolving this wall business. There's the legislation that Democrats want to move forward, even if it doesn't go anywhere. Uh, So there's a lot of gamesmanship, I think, on both sides before they can get to a place where they might actually agree on some things. Yeah. But remember, agreeing on something isn't what pays the bills. It's fighting for certain things. That's what gets you noticed. That's the gamesmanship in all of this. It's it, it's the arguing, it's the fighting. Because most of us, when it comes to, you know, when we look at the way that we're, we're dealing with the opioids and how they want to take it on, absolutely. Who's not going to row in that direction? Who's out there saying, you know what we need is more opioids on the street, right? Criminal reform. Minus the extremes where there's a group that's like, ah, we need more criminal reform. It needs to be, it just, it, we just need to get rid of the criminal justice system altogether. Eh, you're, no, right? And on the other side, people are like, ah, lock them up, throw away the key forever. No. But the majority of us, and the majority at like 90%, we're looking around going, yeah, you know what, this is a good thing. Again, we're rowing in the same direction. So there's no fight. So there's nothing here that they can argue about. How about infrastructure, health care? We differ in health care. I get that. But it doesn't mean we can't row 70% of the time in the same direction and actually start to move in some areas that need movement on. So we'll see. We'll see. But tonight, I think it's going to be much of the same of what we're going to get. So do I think it's going to be fantastic? I do not. I think it's going to be a lot of the same. I think the reactions, though, will be where it's at. How do the Democrats take him? What do they do? How do the Republicans act if the Democrats get a little squirrely? That, myself, I will find that to be interesting. We're still trying to figure out if Governor Northam, remember that guy, here it is, Friday, it's a few days after. I got somebody attack me last night about what a horrible human being I was because I, I made light of infanticide, which I didn't do with Governor Northam. I talked about the fact that we'd already talked about it at nauseum, that he went on local radio station in Virginia as the governor and a doctor, talked about third trimester abortion. We'd already talked about that, and then a few days later, out pops this picture of him in blackface, or maybe he's in the hood, we're not quite sure, and there's a picture of now the guy in the pants, and then there's a picture of him in the pants. I mean, it's just, it's we talked about it, but they're still there. They're still arguing the fighting. And I say actions to me are vitally important. Poor taste, poor choice. Today's woke world versus yesterday's world. Is there a moratorium? Is it five years? Is it 10 years? I mean, after 35 years, do we just say, well, that was 35 years ago. It was stupid, but look who he is. Last night, his childhood friend, her name was Carla, African-American woman, came on, was defending who he was. Wasn't saying that this was a great thing, but she knows what his actions are. 
what the governor did was took ownership of a picture that had his name as a prominent heading. But looking at that for the first time, I can't imagine how gobsmacked he must have been, just as I was disgusted. Um, thinking it was photoshopped is what I thought, and, and who knows what he thought seeing it the first time. Who knows what went through his mind? I don't. You don't think but he saw that the picture person, before? The person I know, the pers- if Ralph says he didn't see it before, he didn't see it before. Now, remember, <laughs> old Ralph there, uh, Northam, Governor Northam, uh, said, I didn't see it. And then at first he came out and said, ah, oh, yeah, it was really horrible. I, how insensitive and bad I was. And please forgive me. And then he came out the next day and he gave that just surreal kind of, it really isn't me. And then he said, I did do it kind of once before with shoe polish on my face for a Michael Jackson dance competition. I did the moonwalk and somebody asked him if he did the moonwalk and he was going to do it. His wife's like, are you kidding me? Which she should have just been quiet and said, I'm going to watch his career go down in flames right here. Uh, I think we know who's the brains in that family. Uh, but I've said it's the actions. I've still not heard a ton of people come out or anybody for that matter. Say that this guy's this awful, horrible human being. And yesterday, people were attacking me on the right, saying, "How can you do this? It's, it's a turnabout's fair play." And I'm just like, "No. This is the this is stupidity. What he did back in the day. Looking back, most people probably laughed. Right or wrong, in that day and age, they probably laughed. Most of us, in our childhood and young adults, as young adults, probably said something." did something, wore something inappropriate, whatever it was at some point in time that based on today's woke world, we'd be in trouble for. But what about his actions? The good that I know my friend is capable of doing, the good that he's done for the Commonwealth to date is going to win itself out if he's allowed to to continue as governor. And that's a big if. His biggest issue, and this is, I I talked to a few PR people yesterday, uh, and they said the biggest thing that he's got is, is, is they're looking at is if he survives this, can he survive this, right? And it's already slowly but surely, even though it's swirling around, it's gone from a national story to it was hot, 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 warm, 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 warm. And we got the State of the Union tonight because we have the attention span of a gnat. So can he survive this? Potentially, I think yes. But the bigger picture is if he survives it, will anybody work with him in Virginia? That's a bigger question. Because some people might just say, nah, I'm, I'm never going to work with a guy like this again. Right? And everybody wants to be out there and they want to be, you know, virtue signaling and how horrible it was. And, and, but I think it's a case study. I think people are looking at this saying, okay, if this guy survives this and it's a picture, and remember, a lot of times what you tweet, yeah, it may get you in trouble, but words look awful on the paper. You don't know the, you know, the inflection, the connotation of everything was taken, but a picture is something. Uh, if he can survive this, other people out there are saying, well, you know, there are other people out there or looking in the future saying, I could probably survive something too. Because if you work in a business like that long enough, based on today's world, people are going to be looking now, knowing that they've got to go into every aspect of your life, from your childhood to your teenage years to your late teens and early 20s and they're going to look for every single thing that you've ever done and did you say something inappropriate at some time did you utter a phrase that you should not have uttered and at the time it seemed like a throwaway but in today's world you'll get popped and they're going to go through it they're going to go through everything now 323-538-2423 Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at me. Ugh, it is nuts, right? Like all the stuff that we, you know, that going through. Like, look, let's look at everything. What did you? Okay, what did you do? Twenty seven. I couldn't tell you. People say, "Would you have anything embarrassing in your yearbook?" I said, "I don't even have a yearbook. I don't even think I had. I don't even think I had a picture taken for my yearbook because I was traveling. I was playing soccer." Uh, and traveling so much, and I'm like, I don't even, I don't, mm, I didn't even get a yearbook, because I'm like, I know what I look like, and I really don't care. (laughs) I don't. 
Here's some. I, I I don't even talk to anybody from my high school. I don't think I. I think the day I left, I never talked to anybody ever again. No, and so I don't know. Maybe, but I know there wasn't that. That was the other. I still was amazed that they said, "Hey, this is a good picture to put in the yearbook." That to me, as is just jaw dropping as anything else. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Got a Twitter poll up. You're going to watch tonight. About 35% of you say you're going to watch. About 44% of you say, nope, not going to watch it. Most of you say, you're going to, 6% say, I'm going to watch some of the highlights. Yeah. So, really, we'll see. Better things to do. A lot of people are tweeting at 323-538-2423. Hey, when it comes to costly repairs, you need options, especially when it comes to your car. And in today's world, car repairs vitally important to you and to me to keep your car running because money's getting more expensive you don't want to go borrow more money so what do you do you do everything you can to keep your car running but the just in case scenario because you no longer have a warranty your car it's sitting right there so what now car shield that's what car shield car shield car shield it's incredible i got extended vehicle protection from car shield you should do the same thing it could save you not just hundreds but thousands upon thousands of dollars on future repairs they make the entire process easy 24 7 roadside assistance a rental car while your car is being worked upon and you get to choose that dealer they get them paid directly you pay a small deductible and away you go what are you waiting for thousands and future car repairs out there save yourself the hassle and the headache get car shield it is the ultimate in extended vehicle protection. 800 car 6100 Mention code Benson or visit carshield.com. Use code Benson. It saves you 10% right there. Carshield.com, code Benson, or call 800 car 6100 Mention code Benson. A deductible may apply. It's the Chad Benson Show. Set Chad straight. Text the show, 323-538-2423. That's 323-538-CHAD. Someone has to do it. Might as well be you. The Chad Benson Show. After nearly three months and the testimony of more than 50 witnesses, the fate of Joaquin El Chapo Guzman now lies in the hands of a jury. The anonymous seven women and five men will decide whether the 61-year-old notorious Mexican crime boss is guilty of trafficking hundreds of thousands of pounds of drugs, money laundering, and conspiracy to murder a number of his rivals. Yeah. I think we know where this is going. It's just how much time is he going to get? Because he's going to get one of those wacky sentences, right? He's going to get like 485 years plus 600 years plus 300 years. But it can be out in 275 years. I mean, there's no, I mean, it's, if you saw any of that, I mean, the salaciousness, people talk about the salaciousness, and there's plenty of salaciousness when it, when it, when it comes to this, right? With his... With his, you know, his wife and his and his mistresses and all of this, plenty of that. But the reality is, when you read through some of the stuff that this guy did and the violence, it's it is nuts. And that doesn't even account. And this is what we should be looking at, talking about all of this stuff. This is where you go to him and say, okay, here's the deal. You know, maybe we can give you a little bit of something, something on the inside. How did you do it? How did you get so much here? How did you? Because you're never going to see the outside again as a free person. So kind of explain to us some of the stuff that you did to get things here. Right now, jurors are sifting through a mountain of evidence, pages of witness testimony, a multitude of text messages, recorded calls, and handwritten letters that prosecutors say prove Guzman was the chief of the brutal Sinaloa cartel. The prosecution arguing their case for weeks, yet the defense settling in just 30 minutes, only calling one witness to the stand. Guzman continues to deny all charges. What is it? Who are you going to call? Like, what do what you, 30 minutes? I'm surprised it took that long. We rest, Your Honor. I mean, come on. <laughs> what, what do you expect? 323 538 2423 at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Love hearing from you. Your useless fact of the day. I got it right here. It is African American History Month. Yesterday was the 100th birthday. It would have been the 100th birthday of Rosa Parks. But do you know on March 5th, on March 2nd, 1955, 
a young woman by the name of Claudette Coleman, who is still alive, actually was the first to say, nah, I'm not going to the back of the bus. But they decided that she wasn't going to be the face of this. Because you see, she was 15. As they said, she was a little bit mouthy. And she was pregnant with a married man's child. But she was the first. And I think history needs to recognize that. Have yourself a good rest of your day. As always, Night Night Jack. This is the Chad Benson Show.